The war in Ukraine has taken yet another turn after the enormous casualties of infantry engagement on land ending in a bloody stalemate on a line roughly claimed by Russia. It has shifted to the skies and the seas. The preferred weapon of choice by both sides being drones. But it's more than that. Russia and Ukraine have now pitched in with their air and naval power unleashing drones and missiles on one another, trying to gain the upper hand in the war. But the big question is, can either of them actually declare victory by winning in the skies and the seas? Can these aerial and naval battles really turn the tables in this war? Or has it become a war of attrition with no end in sight to the death and the destruction? These are the questions we will try to answer tonight. But let's start off with the very latest. Earlier this morning, the Russian Defense Ministry issued a statement. It said it had shot down 11 Ukrainian drones. Out of this, two drones were downed near the city of Sevastopol on the Crimean coast. Nine drones were suppressed by means of electronic warfare in the Black Sea. Not just that, the ministry added there were no reports of damage or casualties in the affected areas. And these alleged strikes came just a day after Russia made yet another such claim. On Wednesday, it claimed to have shot down two more Ukrainian combat drones. They were apparently headed for the Russian capital, Moscow. And it does not end there, by the way. The list of drone attacks on Russia is slightly longer. On Monday, Ukrainian drones were shot down in the Kaluga region that's barely 200 kilometers southwest of Moscow. And a day before that, on Sunday, Ukrainian drones were shot in the Podolsky district, which is also located in, on Moscow's outskirts. And if we go further back, last week, seven more drones were shot down near the Kaluga region again. And in May, drones crashed in Moscow's business district twice in three days. And the same month, Russia averted the first reported drone attack against the Kremlin. But what do these developments really mean and what do they tell you? That after a series of battlefield setbacks, Ukraine has turned to drones to take on Russia. Not just in the air, but also in the water. Have a look at these visuals now. They are from last week. They show a maritime Ukrainian drone attacking a Russian ship. The ship is thought to be the Oligorsky Gornyak. The attack unfolded near the coastline of Novorossiysk, which is a major hub for Russian oil exports. Reports say there were at least two such sea drones. One of them was carrying 450 kilograms of dynamite. It rammed into the Russian ship, causing a serious breach. A video, in fact, showed the ship being tugged to the shore by another vessel. And again, it does not end there. Besides using advanced military drones, Ukrainian soldiers are also using cheap homemade drones to destroy Russian armored vehicles. Have a look at the report on your screen. Ukrainian troops are making drones out of cardboards and rubber bands to fight the Russians. In fact, what, one such drone is described by a media report as the quote-unquote origami of death. Full marks for creativity and also for the spirit. But the question again is, how much can these drones really achieve? You see, the Ukraine war is first and foremost a land battle. Yes, controlling the Black Sea and the airspace is important. It can make either side vulnerable. But to turn the battle in their favor, both the sides will have to actually make gains on land in each other's territories, in each other's cities and districts. So if we just look at it this way, who is winning? This map giving you an idea. The regions marked in red showing territories under Russian control. This includes Luhansk, Bakhmut, Donetsk, Mariupol, Melitopol, 
and the area surrounding these places. What about Ukraine? Well, so far it has only managed to regain Kherson and Kharkiv. And besides this, it has reclaimed some villages near Donetsk and Bakhmut. And last we checked, the battle for full control was still underway. Just to put it more bluntly, the counter-offensive is not going as per plan. In fact, it's moving at a slow and lethargic pace. And it's also not yielding any major battlefield gains. I'm not alone in saying this. The Western media also is. From the Washington Post to CNN, they are all talking about how the pace of the counteroffensive has darkened the mood in Ukraine. So these aerial drone battles, the maritime drone attacks, are symbolic victories at best. They might be making global headlines, they might lead to some statements and reactions, but they are far from getting Ukraine an edge over Russia. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.